everyone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wicca Missoula. I am Scott Ramp. And I'm Noelle McAvoy. And, and I hope you all have a lot of stuff today yeah. as I interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We're both quick to the point. Um, I hope you all had a great weekend. It had a good rain last night. Yeah. Did you, and all the smoke is gone. Oh, yeah. That wind. It was so windy on Saturday. It just like blew all the yeah, smoke out. Yeah, it reminds out. you back in your old country of uh, Great uh, Falls. Oh, old country of Great Falls. I. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Great Falls, yeah. uh, last week uh, Reggie Watts was here, and he's from Great Falls. He was, well. yeah. He's a fellow Great Fallsian. Great Falls. I know. I didn't get to meet him. A bunch of people I know got to meet yeah, him. Yeah, a bunch of people I knew got to meet him, too. Uh, where were we? Uh, I was um, <laughs> doing trivia night with my dad. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know where I was. I was working. That's where I was. But I was so bummed out. I just wanted to be on our show. I just wanted to talk to him about Great Falls. That was it. But, oh. Robert O'Keen was in town last night, everyone. Um, for you, those of you that don't know who he is, he's this really awesome, like, country folk singer that has been around for a couple, for like, since like the 80s, I think. <coughs> and he's not cheesy, but he's pretty good. He was in town last night at the Top At, sold out show. Um, I wish I had gotten to go. It was seated. It looked like it was seated, but it also looked pretty rowdy for a seated show. So I, I didn't get any tickets, but the bouncer let me stand in the doorway for like a minute and watch. He's so good. <laughs> I know. Uh, where, did he, where did he play at? At the Top Hat. Top yeah, hat? sold out show. Wow. Wait, 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 it was this? seated. It was last night. Oh, really? Started at 8. Yeah, it was seated, but it looked pretty rowdy for like being a seated show. I know, and it's Sunday night, too. Yeah, he's really good, though. He's super good. But he comes to Montana all the time, so hopefully one day I get to see him. All right, yeah. so let's take a look at our yeah. um, uh, 15 uh, frames per second webcam that is just outside our MCAT station. You can see this at our website, MCAT.org. And mm -hmm. you see a bunch of people. You can see wardens across yeah, the street. You can see that car parking. Good job, car. Yeah, good oh, job. <laughs> the light must have turned green. Yep. And we have weather. Very right cool. Now. Okay, weather. So it's currently it is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty nice. Humidity, yeah. 96%. It always is really high in the morning. I know, yeah. yeah. Scattered showers today, tonight, mm -hmm. supposed to be storm clower, storm. Clowers. Uh, cloud, <laughs> storm clouds, <and> thunderstorms. <laughs> and then Tuesdays is another slight chance of thunderstorms. Oh, Friday. Wednesday, showers are likely on Wednesday. Yeah. So if you guys are going out to Bonner Park to listen to the city band, that's you might have to it's gonna dress be, appropriately. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice week it looks like, but maybe a little chilly, which that's okay. That happens. But it's been a very weird weather for summer. It really has. Yeah. I feel like summer just started and then school starts in like a month. It does. I feel sorry for you. I'm so sad. <laughs> I don't wanna <laughs> go back. Well, well, for uh, me, it's just like, uh, it was like, oh, summer's here, and it's like, oh, I just let it continue working. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, last semester, there were days when I would, like, wake up at 7, start my day at 7, go to go here, then go to school, and then go to work at 5, get off at 11, and then, like, go to the library to, like, 1 or 2. Oh. And then start it all over again the next day. Like, I am just don't, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm just not. College is so intense. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Don't miss those days, Don't do you? Don't miss those days <laughs> at all. So, all right. um, also, I wanted to make it. Uh, look at our. If you look at our website, you can see that our Missoula County Public High Schools are going to be. The, our, the high school graduations are going to air on MCAT on Channel 11 on July 28th, which is, I think, next. Wednesday. No, Ideally. no. Next, it's, it's it'll be next week. It's, it's one week. week. It's in one week. Yeah. It's the twenty first day. What I'm talking about? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, remember uh, it's Matthew's birthday. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of our kids in our camp. You know, he's a junior counselor. He constantly, he like, he he didn't say he's like, um, it's that's when my birthday is. Like, when is your birthday? No, it's on the first day of the camp. I was like, no, but when is your birthday? It's yeah. on the first day of the camp. I was like, Which camp? <laughs> <laughs> we have some very silly kids. <laughs> Oh, man, Matthew's hilarious. Right. And you can also check out all our information that we do today. Mm -hmm. Everything that we show it will be posted on our Facebook page at Wake of Missoula on Facebook. Yeah, and if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post it to our page, and we will definitely address them for you guys. Yeah, but right now we're going to talk about what's going on at MCAT, all the new programming. Mm -hmm. So what's happening? So um, besides, at MCAT, we have a lot of new programming. One mm -hmm. of them is the... Um, UN, UM, University of Montana Win Ensemble. Oh, nice. we ha we're going to be showing their concert from last, um, 
spring concert. Oh, then cool. there's okay. the Mullen Road Conference. It's part two where they're talking about the history of Mullen Road and the major trail that basically put Montana on the map for trading and travel. Oh, neat, neat. And um, then on Tuesday night, there's the Global <coughs> Leadership Initiative. Cool. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but right now I'm going to show a little uh, music from the University of Montana Music Department's Win Ensemble. As a colonial American historian, I can tell you it goes right back to the early colonies when one of the things that the settlers of Virginia and Massachusetts and New York were hoping for was that they could go up a particular river and then reach, reach the Pacific Ocean, that the Northwest Passage would be right there. And Indians often told these folks, well, this river won't get you there, but go 50 miles north and you can, you can do that. And that's going to be at 7.30 tonight. And right after that, we're going to be showing a... Um, global, uh, like the university's global um, lectures. Okay. And cool. also we have a um, Dave Diploff. Yeah. And he's with the National Wildlife Federation. And they're going to be talking about the clean power plan. So he'll talk about that in a little bit, but yeah. first we're going to show this video right here. Well, I'm pr impressed, by the way, that the GLI is being funded by private donors. It's enormously important. I think it's also very clever. And there's clearly something that is appealing to alumni and supporters of this institution, as it should be. So if you can ta tap into the imagination of your own uh, alumni and neighbors and you know, citizens of the state, I think that's great. And that's going to be Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. We'll be right back after this. MCAT has summer camps. There is media camp, animation camp, and movie making camp. In Media Camp, we learn how to write stories, create a storyboard, camera skills, and editing skills. We make movies and edit them ourselves. We also get to travel to radio stations, TV stations, and small production companies. In Animation Camp, we learn how to make stop motion and animated movies. We learn how to use the editing program Dragon Frame. With this, we learn how to create stories using Legos, Play-Doh, and Wire. Movie in Movie Making Camp, is where we learn how to make movies using professional broadcast equipment. We learn how to create storyboards and write scripts, and as well editing camera work and cinema and photographing. At the end of each day of camp, there's a live show where we talk about what we did each day, what we learned, and what we will do the next day. On Friday's live show, we premiere all the movies we made throughout the week. This year, we added an extra animation camp which starts July 21st through tw the 25th, and there are six more spots available. So sign your kid up today. Hey, everyone. We're right back. We're with Dave Diploff, and he's mm -hmm. with the National Wildlife Federation. So um, you're here to talk about a plan that will reduce carbon emission in basically all power plants in the United States. Am I right? Yep, yep. Recently, the, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency uh, released a, a proposed rule uh, that would reduce carbon emissions at existing power plants by 30% by the year 2030. Mm. Um, you, maybe the most important thing this country's ever done to address climate change here. Power plants are our biggest single source of emissions in the country. If we're going to tackle climate change, we need to tackle carbon pollution from power plants. <laughs> and how much um, carbon emission are is going to be reduced, like um, like you said, thirty percent. But overall, how much um, how much smaller is our carbon footprint T globally? Um, you know, globally, it's it's a uh, you know I, I don't have a, a tonnage amount per se. But, um, you know, that gets us below that you know three hundred fifty uh, particles per million, which is what most experts say that we need to get below in order to reduce uh, you know uh, you know to address climate change and, and kind of nip it in the bud. Right. Um, you know this by itself won't get us there here, but it's a kind of, 
I think of uh, climate change is if we're going to address it is needing a lot of different strategies and one of them uh, would be this so this would be a nice slice of the pie if you will here but I don't have a exactly a total tonnage amount here um, that, that so this is the way you would consider a step in the right direction exactly that's a, maybe but there the are many steps being taken and um, so far it's mostly been creating awareness but this is uh, something that's a, a major plan that could affect not only you know just like the way we um, use energy but the way the world sees this as well exactly exactly one of the the big important things it would reduce emissions you know fairly significantly in our country maybe not all the way we need to like I said it's just a step but the problem with uh, you know this issue is it's a global issue in China and other countries have a large you know they're emitting a lot of carbon into the atmosphere as well and uh, right now we have the United States has had a, an inability to really engage other countries because frankly we as a country haven't done much to address mm -hmm. this issue there's a, a bill that passed Congress a cap-and-trade bill oh geez six years ago something like that now uh, that never did pass the Senate um, and we just haven't you know like really kicked into gear with um, um, a lot of different issues regarding climate change and this I think will provide some credibility to uh, the Obama administration, to Secretary of State Kerry, who actually has been a longtime champion when he was a senator uh, mm -hmm. on climate change issues, to have a little bit more moral authority instead of like, hey, why are you telling us what to do? You're not doing anything yourself. It's kind of been the attitude internationally up till now. Yeah. So it really helps that card as well here drive an issue that you know really is global in nature. We need all the countries you know, to reduce carbon emissions. Carbon, once it gets up in the air, it transfers all over the country. It's not like a, a local clean air issue right. that some, some like mercury would be a clean. But you also need, um, so rather than needing the on the global scale, you also need some people to come in this Wednesday. You have an event coming up on this Wednesday. So would you like to talk about that a little bit? Sure, sure. It gets to the whole idea of, of think globally, act locally here. So we are uh, a National Wildlife Federation, my organization, together with the Sierra Club, Montana Conservation Voters, uh, Montana Elders uh, for a Livable Tomorrow, Northern Plains Resource Council, um, the University of Montana Climate Action Now group, I'm probably missing one or two here, Montana Audubon, um, Montana Environmental Information Center, are all kind of co-hosting mm -hmm. what we're labeling a citizen's hearing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it'll be uh, this Wednesday, um, the 23rd at 7 o'clock at the Public Library, um, and uh, it's a... The idea is that the EPA is have uh, on this rule it has a four official hearings. Uh, the closest one is Denver. Well, that's not really realistic to have Missoulians get to Denver here. Yeah. So we're kind of creating our own event, if nice. you will, kind of a, a citizen hearing. Uh, we'll uh, video record uh, and transcribe all the different comments. So they will. Uh, everybody that gets up and talk uh, and talks will uh, have basically be submitting official comments. They'll be transferred into writing and, and submitted that way. And this is going to be at the Missoula Public Library, right? Missoula Public Library, their main, their main uh, conference, room? conference room there yes. on the first floor. Um, we do have some really interesting uh, speakers kind of lined up to kick things off here as well here. And they'll all be short, but you know, Dr. Ashley Ballantyne is a bioclimatologist, internationally known guy on campus. Uh, Dr. Diana Six is a bark beetle expert. One of the impacts of climate change right. is what bark beetles are doing to our forests. Um, State Senator Sue Malik will be there, um, you know, and so we've got a good, I call them VIP speakers, I guess, if you will, to kick things off. But the idea is for everybody to get up and, and, and give their two cents on it. Yeah, what's the process of getting this power plan, this clean power plan enacted? Well, they, they just proposed it about a month ago. Okay. Um, so it's a proposed rule, it's in written form. Um, and then uh, there's a public comment period on it now that goes through through the summer, essentially. Um, and then. The, the Environmental Protection Agency will look at all those comments um, you know, around the nation. We're hoping to get millions of comments in support. Nice. Um, but they'll also look at technical um, um, comments and maybe how they can make it a little bit better as well here. You know, nip around the edges here to, to make it run a little bit more smoothly, let's say. So you're always looking for new ideas and new um, yeah. ways of you can lower the carbon emission and lower our um, carbon footprint. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and this, the way this rule has been set up, there is a lot of flexibility that um, you know, states can uh, um, use in order to get to their target levels of reduction here, whether it's renewable energy or, or th certain things specifically at uh, some of the power plants. Um, and it makes it uh, 
you know, should make it more efficient uh, for our ability to get there. It's not so command and control where each each smokestack needs to reduce their emissions by 30%. Mm -hmm. There's more flexibility in how you do that. Yeah, how are they going to go about reducing emissions? Well, it, it, the way this is, is each state, so in Montana, will be the State Department of Environmental Quality, um, and each state's equivalent mm -hmm. uh, will be charged with um, you basically uh, creating a plan on how you get to that 30% reduction. And okay. within that, there is a lot of flexibility. So each state um, can kind of address it in their own way. Um, you know, renewable energy would certainly get us there, whether it's wind or solar or geothermal or what have you. Um, you know, potentially, um, you know, looking at individual power plants, there there is, um, you know, ways that you can, you know, conceivably capture the carbon and mm -hmm. store it. Um, that could be one possibility here from the smokestacks. Um, it could be a transition in the state away from kind of dirty or coal-fired power plants right. towards natural gas or, like I said, renewables. Mm -hmm. um, so basically it depends on the circumstances in each state and kind of the expertise with the state agencies. So we're yes. excited. We've got a really good uh, Department of Environmental Quality here, I think, um, you know, to address this issue here in a, in a leadership within that department that we're, we're pretty right. confident in. So one last um, com one last thing uh, I would like you to say is like, where can people find more information? How can they get involved? Where can people, um, you know, like where can people go to, you know, find more information, all that stuff? Well, certainly, you know, National Wildlife Federation's website is an easy one. It's pretty easy, www.nwf.org. And there's a, you know, a, a climate button right there to click on here, and they'll have all kinds of stuff that it basically, they'll be deluged with information. Um, but they can, uh, you know, peruse it uh, and what really gets, uh, uh, appeals to them. Hmm. Yeah. All right, is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, no, not really. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> invited to come on down uh, uh, on the, uh, on Wednesday, the 23rd here, um, we're hoping to have a good crowd. Um, so what time is it at again? It's at 7 o'clock. Okay, a yeah. big meeting, largest conference room in the pu public library. In the public library. I just got a uh, re read through an email that Bernice's Bakery is going to give us a big donation, so there'll be cookies nice. and drinks and stuff there as Perfect. well here. So, yeah, pretty. it should be fun. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like it. Cool. All right, well, thank, thank you, well, thank you, you so much, guys. Um, this yeah. was uh, Dave Diploff with uh, National Wildlife Federation. And thanks for joining us. Yeah. It's been great. Um, we'll hope to hear from you again soon. Let's say sure, you sure, sure, appreciate one it. One of MCAT's programs not too long ago. If you or anyone you know wants a copy of our wonderful programming, call us 542-6228 or email us at MCAT.org. Ask for a dub request and tell us what you want. We'll get it to you. Walk-ins welcome. Just go to 500 North Higgins, Suite 105, just off the Welcome back. We're back. <laughs> that was very interesting. The mm -hmm. clean power plant. That'll be cool. Let me kind of kind of cool to see. Um, uh, I want to show a funny video before we get to it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Every promotional video. I, I made this video um, because I had nothing else to do on Friday, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanted to give a little shout out to Josh Many because he's not here on Mondays anymore. No, and he does such hard work. Yes. All right. All right. So here's, <laughs> here's Josh Many. We're looking for Josh Minnie. Hello, is there any Josh Minnies around there? Josh Minnie. Hey, where's Josh Minnie? I'm Josh Minnie. 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 I'm Josh Minnie too. I'm Josh Minnie. 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 Too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough of that stuff. <laughs> we have events. Yes, yes. Noelle McAvoy. <coughs> Next up is events with me. Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, all the events I have is just for today. So this is all what's going on today and Monday. So Monday, uh, there is a Corp Discovery Adventure Camp today. It started at 8 a.m. 
And um, <coughs> this Corp of Adventure camp, it was started at 8 a.m. at McCormick Park. Um, and they're going to hike the canyon, forge the river like Lewis and Clark did, mm -hmm. as they follow the steps of the pioneer of the American Outdoor Adventures. So this camp will focus on the natural history and the path of Corps of Discovery, while they raft, climb, hike, and bike the area surrounding Missoula. Uh, this is put on by the Missoula Parks and Recreation. It's for ages 7 to 12, and it meets July 21st to the 25th from 8 a.m. to 5.30. You know what so. a good icebreaker for those kids are? Talk about... Um, you know, Lewis and Clark, they track their, um, their exact trail by yeah. where they pooped. Yeah, I know. Isn't that interesting? I know. Start, that's a good icebreaker. You know, it's the beginning of their camp. They should yeah. totally start off with I this. know, because they took mercury, because they thought it would be good laxatives. Ooh. Yeah. I know. Isn't that gnarly? It's awful. Isn't yeah. mercury make you crazy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. Like, that, I don't know. It's really cool and really crazy. <laughs> Crazy guys. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, $225 or it's $180 with the city card. And then there is a beginning kayaking with Zootown Surfers today. So it's at 8 a.m. They'll be practicing rolls on flat water and will learn new strokes in the river. All participants must be able to swim, and the fee includes all gear, instruction, and transportation. And they want you to send your child with lunch, water, with lunch, water swimsuit, water shoes, and a towel. Uh, this meets July 21st, the 25th, from 8 a.m. to 12:30. It's $216 or $180 with the city card. So while you're watching this now, <coughs> go, go, run. <laughs> Um, there is the Missoula YMCA is putting on a camp teepee, teepee tonka mm. at 9 a.m. Um, what the YMCA events are always really vague. All it says is outdoor adventure camp that <laughs> runs weekly starting July 21st and ending August 22nd. Teepee tonka. Yeah, camp teepee tonka. So just go to the YMCA and check it out. I'm sure they'll give you a lot of information on it. Uh, so usually pretty vague. Um, <clears throat> there is a Green Path Herb School. This is at Meadowsweet Herbs on uh, 180 South 3rd Street West in Missoula. Um, so it, the price is $3,550. So it's, it's pretty expensive, but includes classes, handouts, materials, and medicine making supplies. That's probably why it's so expensive. Yeah, and like you'll discover a new and exciting direction of your life you know explore the ancient art and modern science of herbal healing which I really think that's awesome I want to get into that but I don't have three thousand dollars to no. spend on that so it looks it's pretty expensive but it's how I mean, you can start your career in herbalism yeah a professional herbalist it's this curriculum is designed to provide a total immersion immersion into a natural healing and medicinal plants to so, get like a, a certificate if I you think so yeah like, I, would, I would think so yeah yeah, so that goes on today, uh, Monday through Mondays and Wednesdays, Monday through Wednesdays, 9 a.m., um, and it goes starts today and goes through August 20th. So you can call 274-2009 if that sounds like something you're interested in. Yeah, that'll be really, really interesting. Um, I wish I could afford that. Okay, really also, <laughs> today at Ruby's Inn and Convention Center, there is a day camp. It's called the Camp to Remember Day Camp. And it's at 9 a.m., and this camp is really special. This camp is for children ages 5 through 12 who are grieving with the death of a family member. Yeah, so it's a, night, it's a camp where, you know, if you're having problems, if you just lost someone really close to you, you can all just kind of come together and share things and just have fun with each other. So uh, it'll be from July 21st to the 24th from 9 a.m. to 3. And you can call Molly at 541-8472 to register for the camp. <coughs> and then at the Zootown Arts Community Center, there's Makeup Pottery World. It's July 21st to the 25th. From 9 a.m. to 12, the instructor is Kendall Rogers. It's for ages 6 through 12. Um, it's $90 for non-members and $80 for members. And in this class, students will learn a variety of techniques and make several projects with clay. You'll learn to hand build almost anything that they can imagine and, you know, make a bunch of cool projects to That's send home. That's kind of what home. we do here. We, we make our own clay things, but yeah. then we use stop animation to make it yeah. move. We made a lot of blog movies where they eat we Legos. We did, it's yeah. Pretty awesome. Last week was really fun. Or the week before that. It was the week before that, because yeah. last week was like chill, nothing. Like, chill, So chill, it felt like nothing so. happened. So much so, we forgot about uh, last week. Yeah. <laughs> but this week, there's still plenty of room in our summer camps. So. Mm -hmm. How many spots do we have left? We have, uh, half of it's full. Yeah, so you've got six or spots left. If you're pessimistic, half of it's empty. <laughs>
Half of it's full. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a junior, junior farmer summer camp today at 9 a.m. This is at the Homestead Organic, Organics Farm for the Bears far, Farm Camp. Um, or Homestead Organic Farms. This is in Hamilton, Montana. Um, and so it's July 21st to 25th for youth entering 5th through 8th grades. And for more information, you can go to bearmontana.org or call 363-5410. And since it's a junior farmer summer camp, I'm going to guess that they're probably just going to learn how to farm and learn about plants mm -hmm. and how to do things like that. Yeah, there are scholarships available too if you can't afford it. But go to bearmt.org for it's, more information on that. It's an acronym, so B-E-A-R-M-T, yeah, dot org, yep. Um, there is a kids' clay camp at the Clay Studio in Missoula today. They'll be hand-building tableware. Ooh. This will be from for 9 to 13 years old, um, Monday through Friday, July 21st to 25th, 9.30 to 11.30, and um, you can make plates, cups, bowls, and vases. Each day will be a new piece of tableware, and you can leave with an entire dining set at the end of the day, at the end of the week. Oh, I have a funny story. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in kindergarten, we made clay pots and all that stuff, so, you know, like, you know, clay ashtrays or clay yeah. pots or whatever, so I made a clay pot for my mom for her birthday or whatever, and then just, like, the year or two, like, just this year, she says, like, can, should I get rid of this? And I was just like, I made it for you when I was little. Oh! Oh, did she get rid of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I made her feel guilty. That's super funny. I'm glad. Yeah. Good. She should feel guilty. She should feel guilty. That's terrible. I hope she's like, watching this. Ma, she's not. she always hated it. <laughs> she, she always hated it. <laughs> she never liked that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a delicate little flower right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, so man. let's talk about the Missoula Art Museum before I start crying. Okay. <laughs> so at the Missoula Art Museum, they're having a Color My World with paint. It's uh, from 10 a.m. to noon for ages 7 to 12, and it's $54 or $60 if you're a member. And so the teacher is Erin Roberts, and they're just going to teach you the joys of painting. She's going to start out with flowers and the basics of color mixing before taking the campers out to look at the natural world for inspiration. So they'll pa paint trees, mountains, bugs, and bunnies, and, you know, nature stuff. Yeah, that sounds fun. Today at 10... Stuff. Um, there is an adventure camp exploring wilderness. This is at 10 a.m. for kids 9 through 12 at the Swan Ecosystem Center. And the camp is <coughs> filled with motivating nature awareness games, opportunities for practice, survival skill challenges, and solo periods for strengthening personal connection to nature. Um, along the way, they'll invest, investigate the landscape, encouraging a scientific approach with self-discovery, as well as learning from special guest experts that will join them throughout the week. Uh, participants will rely on field guides to answer their questions, discover ingenious ways to reutilize resources, and learn to carefully observe the science and clues left behind by critters that live there. Yeah. Um, they'll also use creative journaling to record what they see, hear, smell, and taste and feel throughout the week. And each year there's a new theme that will guide the exploits and locations throughout the Swan Valley. So the theme this year is exploring wilderness, which makes sense. And um, the adventure camp, there will be, include an overnight camp out on Thursday night. But the rest of the week is just the day camp. And so it's $95. And it's at 6887 Montana, Highway 83, Condon, Montana. Call 754-3137 for more information on that or to register. There is a Kia Water World Camp. This is at 1230 at Playfair Park. You can soak up late summer fun in the sun. They'll make sandcastles at Playfair Park, make waves at Currents, visit local splash decks, and go crazy at Splash Montana. So this is for ages 6 to 12, meets 21st to the 25th from 1230 to 530. It's $50 or $40 with a city card. There's the bridge group at the Missoula Senior Center today. The beginners slash the brush up group meets at 1, Mondays at the center. The advanced bridge group meets at 1 at the center on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and on Fridays for party bridge. A dollar twenty-five fee is charged to cover expenses as the Missoula City Senior Center is a nonprofit and they need money, as we all do. Okay. Uh, there is an African music and dance camp class at the Zutan Arts Community Center. Uh, this will be July 21st to the 25th, 1 to 4 p.m. The instructor is Taryn Reem. It's for ages 6 through 12. 
$90 for non-members or $80 for members. And in this class, you'll engage in dancing, learning choreography, singing, playing drums, and making costumes with recycled materials, accumulating in a performance at the end of the week. Nice. So they'll learn about African music, ethnic groups, musical instruments, type of dances, cultural practices, and the influence of African culture on other art forms, including popular modern American dances slash music. So they'll be that'll still be a lively and culturally enriching session. Yeah. And Tarn Reem has been around Missoula for a long time and she brought African music and dance presentations and classes to Montana schools in the community like twenty years ago. So she's been in here for quite a while. So that'll be really cool. Um, <coughs> there is a so there is a little class where it's a right question project slash effectively communicating with CPS, which is Child Protective Services. So this is at 2 p.m. at the Women's Opportunity and Resource Development. And this is the first session where they, so let me just read this for you. Um, so it'll be one time, a two hour session, where the topic will be on understanding how to create a strategic, strategic plan of communication to better your situation and understanding of CPS. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. And if you're having problems with CPS and you need some extra help and finding out what to do, go to this. It's free. There's no registration fees, open to the public, it's free. It'll be at... Women's Opportunity Resource Development Center. I'm not sure where that is. Um, you can contact Erica 543-3550, extension 211, or E-D-E-F-O-R-R-E-S-T at wordinc.org to register. Yeah. And then... As always, every Monday at the Top Hat, they're Raising the Dead, live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead. So this is every Monday from 5 to 7, where they are going to be showing live recorded videos from Grateful Dead concerts from the 60s to the 90s. You've got all their years, and it's two hours. Yeah, it's free, all ages. There's also movie night every Monday at the Top Hat Lounge. It's called Richard Hugo Kicking the Loose Gravel Home. Um, I wasn't able to find a trailer on this, actually. I looked, but I don't know. There are weird videos. So, I, yeah, that's what's going on. Free all ages. And also tonight is La Luna Nueva Summer Flamenco. This is um, Monday today at 8, at 8 p.m. Seattle-based flamenco dancer Savannah Fuentes twirls into the crystal to present La Luna Nueva, which is, you know, the new moon, with guest singer Jose Anillo and guitarist Bobby De Sofia. Uh, this is at the Crystal Theater, 515 South Higgins Avenue, 8 p.m., $25, uh, $15 for students, and $10 for kids. You can call 1-800-838-3006 for more information or to buy tickets. But I think you can also just go to the Crystal Theater and buy tickets. But I've got a video of her doing some flamenco dancing. So here it is. <laughs> So she will be tonight at the Crystal Theater. But that is all of the events that I have for you. So that's what's going on today. Um, if you want to know more about these events or know what's going on the rest of the week or what's going on tomorrow, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. And I also got some of my information from the Missoula of Independent, so you can check out the Independent for more events. Yeah, but that's all we have for today, right? Yep. We have the City Council meeting that's going mm -hmm. on tonight. You can find out what's on the agenda by going to the website of the City of Missoula. Mm -hmm. And Josh will be back on Wednesday and Friday to talk about it. I'll talk all about what happened in the City Council meeting. <laughs> Sum it up for you guys so you can, you know, ingest it nice and slowly. <laughs> <coughs> oh my gosh! Oh, we're gonna get out of here before Noel like yeah before I like to death. <laughs> so for um, Wake of Missoula, I'm Scott Ranch. and I'm Noel McAvoy. We'll see you Wednesday. Thank you.